Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Harry Singer Foundation Empowering You Show. And I'm as excited as ever because I am going to be bringing you my brother from another mother who I absolutely love and adore and he is an absolute rock for me, especially in the world of empowering youth. Right? He empowers grown-ups, big youths as well but he is absolute legend. And anytime we have a summit, he's one of the top people on the list. I call him and say, gee, are you available? We're gonna be running a youth leadership summit. So I'm excited to bring him here on this show. But before I do, let's introduce you, give you a little bit of flavor. So this guy's name is George Hardwick, right? And who is George? Like all of the guests we have, you know, I could fill that top line with so many things that they do, but these are the ones I've drawn out from him. So he's a poet. He's a mentor, he's a speaker, he's an author, like he's got several books now, I think, and he's also a show host. But let me give you a list of some of the achievements and what he's been up to. So he's spoken and, he's spoken and performed across five continents, and I know this because I've seen him there and I've been with him, and not only has he spoken around the globe, it's he's as comfortable when he's speaking in a classroom, a boardroom, in arenas, and even though with me, we've been in like slums and orphanages, and he's still able to share his gift. But on top of that, he shared and spoken and performed on stages where he's done his TEDx. He shared the stage with Ed Sheeran, yes, the same one. So Richard Branson, and there's many other lists, but it's just, I just want you to get a flavor that even though he, he's so humble and his feet are on the ground, he still gets to play with the big boys and girls when it comes to service. And then on top of that, he's got his own radio and podcast show. And we'll talk a bit about what he does on there. Because if you do not, if when you get a flavor of who he is, you will want to go and join him on those shows. And when I was getting a list of all the things that he had done, I wanted to draw out because... The true service leaders tend not to just show all the numbers and the figures, but I've got from him, it's now over 500 young people that he's worked with, you know, individually to create poetry and rap and really bring out the best in them because one of George's own admissions, one of his own admissions about his highest achievements is to get to see those young people that he's helped live lives of meaning and purpose. And that's what makes him an absolute legend in our world. And then... He is, as I already said, he is a Harry Singer Foundation Youth Leadership Summit resident speaker. And we're, we're so lucky to have him. And on top of that, he's a father. So he has two beautiful young children that I know he adores. And we'll put, we're sure they're going to come up in the conversation. But what's his mission? There's so many things that people say mission. But I, for him, I know what he lives because this is what he's always been saying. That he just wants to do what he loves as a way of helping others do the same. So that's what we're gonna to bring to you today. So let me go straight to him without further ado. Hey G, welcome to the show. Thank you for taking the time out being here, brother. Harry, welcome, how's it going? Hello everyone, thank you for having me on Harry. It's a, it's a, it's a wonder to be here. Awesome, 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 bro. So G, I've given him a flavor. And for those that you're watching, I'm calling him G, because that's just what I've been calling him for years, right? But we've, we've just given him a flavor, George, around you know, the highlights, the, what you've been doing, what you do now, but with all of our guests, I always want to keep it, I want to keep it real. So give people a little bit of the backstory, like, you know, who is George? Because I know, I know your upbringing now is playing a big part about what you do in the world, you know, going into a boarding school and all of these things. So go ahead, tell people yeah. about the George story that people don't know about, and then we'll go and talk about some of the stuff you're doing now. Go for it. So this being the Empowering Youth Show, maybe let's start kind of at that point where you and I connect with a lot of young people, like that kind of 15, 16 year old period. And if I look at what is the significant thing that happened around that period, um, for me, it's that I was in love and that love was not returned. And mm. so to deal with that pain, I know you talk about letting it out, right? Um, my way of letting it out became writing poetry. And so I, I would start just writing poems, you know, writing poems. And what I was also obsessed with at that point was being as original as a poet as I could be. So those were the two things that started there, were like trying to find the best possible words and also using poetry as a way to kind of resolve my pain, right? Mm -hmm. um, and if we fast forward then to heading to university, coming to the end of university, I made a very stupid decision. 
and I'm sure uh, both your younger viewers and your older viewers can resonate with sometimes like quick hands up who's made a stupid yeah, decision yeah, in their yeah. life, right? Um, well, you see, mine was yeah. that I had had this best education that money could buy. So my grandfather was quite wealthy, sent me to a boarding school. And the path for folks who've been to boarding school typically is you go to the city and you get a quote unquote respectable job. And I knew this wasn't for me because I discovered uh, during my time at university, this marvelous thing called British hip hop. <laughs> and um, you see, I loved uh, like the whole wordplay with rap, with hip hop, but I didn't love what I was seeing on MTV at the time, mm. which was cars, money, girls, like the American rap was basically pop and materialist and it didn't resonate at all. Mm. And then I came across UK hip hop and I was like, my God, here is a, here is an art form that is amazing social commentary. Um, that's talking about the challenges of poverty and of like uh, real stuff in the UK, but also about like match of the day and football and, you know, fish and chips. Um, so I was like, this is amazing. And so myself and my best friend, we decided we were going to become UK hip hop entrepreneurs. Yeah. Now, there are a couple of problems with that. Two big ones, really. One, I didn't know much about UK hip hop. I didn't know much about being an entrepreneur. <laughs> However, what I did have is I had that inspiration. Like, and you, you know yourself, and I'm sure there's others watching who they just feel there's a calling to do something. And you know, all of the things I've studied since demonstrate time and again that if you take a step towards that inspiration, life will help you to take a leap. Like, I fundamentally believe that, and I've seen it play out in so many situations. Like, I'm sure you and I have got, we could probably list five or six occasions just on our journeys together where that's been true, right? Yeah. Um, so this was it. My, my friend and I, we started putting on these hip-hop club nights, and they blew up. And we like sometimes they were so busy they'd spill out onto the streets and the police. George, 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 let for those that may not be from similar Western countries. When you say it blew up, explain what you mean oh, by they oh, blew up. Oh, right? Yeah, one hundred percent. Right. <laughs> um, so it went it went mad. We we had quite a small venue, but this small venue, like every time, would be filled with 200, 300 people, yeah. and it would spill out onto the streets, and the police would come along thinking there was some like fights or something happening, and yeah. they would see these young MCs like like spitting their bars in the middle of a circle on the street and what we recognized was that there was an incredible appetite for this and i mentioned there was two problems i didn't know much about hip-hop or entrepreneurship so my fledgling efforts to be an entrepreneur kind of started to fall away but two very important things happened i got asked to do some workshops with young people um around emceeing around helping them to create their own raps because they were making these lyrics about stabbing people and shooting people and we were like come on guys i think we can do a bit better than yeah. this right yeah. and so i started having a lot of success connecting with these young people um and this is where brother you come into the story because mm. i was having this success but i didn't it was like beginner's luck this is the first bits of youth work i'd done i didn't really understand like why i was making a connection why i was being successful and I knew that this was going to be a part of my journey was supporting young people. So I wanted to understand how could I go from almost like unconscious competence um, to conscious competence? How could I actually become a master in understanding how to connect with young people and particularly use this skill set that I had in rap? Um, and so I sought out, and again, this, you, you take a step towards your inspiration. My friend at the time said, Oh, I've, I've met this guy and I've come across, he, do, he like trains young people to be like coaches for each other. And he's a really like inspiring guy. I think you should check him out. I was like, great. About 10 days later, she says, I've got a ticket to go and see him. Like there's a free place. Do you want to come and see him? And I was like, yes, absolutely. You're never going to know who that person was. He was speaking <laughs> at a school in uh, Wolverhampton. I remember um, it very and, well. And I'll tell my version of the story in a second, but go for it. So um, and here's what happened there is when I saw you stepping on the stage, sharing your story in the way that you did, what I saw was an audience of young and old captivated. And you were doing two things. You were educating, i.e. helping them bring out what's within, mm. and you were inspiring. And I knew that was, the, that was the kind of mix that I wanted now. And so I was like, right, here is someone who's doing what I want to do. And I knew that I would probably do it in my own way, but I could learn from you 
And so I invested, like I invested in a mentorship program with you. Mm. And uh, that was really the beginning of a shift in my skill set from going, okay, cool, I know roughly how to turn up into a room and make a connection if I'm lucky, to going, put me in any room, in any situation with any people, and I know that I can do those two things. I can inspire and I can educate. Um, well, let me give the other um, side of that story. Yeah, as, as you brought it back, that must have been at least 13 years, 14 years ago. And I remember being at the event, and you know, I've been running lots of different events, but that one sticks out for me because it was the day when I met George, because there are two things that I remember like it was yesterday. That um, Rachel, our dear sister, that you know, she was she was telling me like, you know, who was in the room and so on. I think we had a break or we had lunch, and everybody had gone out, and we were in like a typical school hall and so on. And there was this one dude that had like a little cooking pan, and I was looking at him from afar, and me and Rachel were like watching it. It's like, and he's got a little stove, and he's doing, that. and we're like, what's he doing? And she came and she said, I think he's making like tea. <laughs> like, and I remember it because both George and I are very passionate about when it comes to making like masala tea, Punjabi tea. I didn't know that, I didn't know who he was. That was my first like, who is this crazy guy? He's gonna set fire to the school or whatever it was. And, and he wanted to bring me a cup of chai. And I was like, I was blown away that this guy thought, oh, okay, you know, he's a Punjabi dude. And then I remember right at the end, I asked for a volunteer to come out and read something. And I know George had put his hand up and I thought, I'm going to have him. He came out and I think it was the Marion Williamson that yeah, he read yeah. out. And, you know, and even then, there was a part of you that was like, oh, I'm stepping out of my zone. But we could feel and sense in there that there was some vibrational energy coming from this soul who seemed so raw, yet there was something within him his own unique thing so i remember that well dude it's just like when you say it now it's uh so it's a beautiful and like you say we went on a beautiful journey together and i've been able to witness your growth so go ahead and talk about those things because from there you know you went on and took poetry and creativity and innovation to some of the most challenged youth and communities in the country and even in the world. You know, we went to the remotest parts of Myanmar, uh, I mean, Africa. Yeah. So there's so many amazing stories. Like you, you, I remember, when, remember the time when you got in the TV interview in front of 7 million people, but we'll talk about all of those in a second. You right. tell it from your way, where your journey went from there when you, you know, you finally stepped up and said, right, this is what I'm going to do. So, you know, mm. blend that into a bit about what you do now, but go ahead because yeah. I want people to know the type of impact that you made and, you know, talk about, like, get, let's get onto the youth and then we'll talk about Branson and these places where yeah. you were doing raps for them. So what that really kicked off was, um, I think fairly soon after investing in mentorship, um, we then, you were delivering the uh, coaching program at, what was it, Young Options? Is that the, the, the right name? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so, like, listen, for anyone who is wondering how to uh, connect more effectively with young people, um, I don't know if you still run it as a home study program or what, but um, Harry's youth coaching program, like, I, I've done a lot of training in my life. And that one really stands out because of like how much I still leverage parts of it even today. Um, it, like, it is seriously robust. It is seriously comprehensive. Um, and yet, again, delivered in a way that is really, really accessible. Um, so from essentially embedding that skill set and then starting to go out and do some of the pro other programs with you, but also coming back into my community and running youth programs uh, for two different youth clubs and um, over the next couple of years being asked to create and deliver programs for the Prince's Trust. Um, around essentially using music as a way to connect with young people who are um, out of work and trying to create opportunities. Um, I, I had a really focused, um, almost like five, four or five years of just reps, 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 reps in. How do you create uh, programs that can inspire, transform, educate young people? Um, and that was, uh, so that was really a part of the journey. And alongside that, um, started to become this introduction to the world of personal development 
um, which was like, honestly, this blew me away. As someone who is passionate about, you know, like how do I become the best human being I possibly can mm. so that I can be of the greatest service? Mm. The world of like personal development, Tony Robbins coaching, blah, blah, blah. like it, like it was, I was like candy to a baby, uh, honestly. Um, and to then be able to bring this skill set that I developed to that world and see it be received in the way that it was, um, was like, was very humbling, but also like super exciting. Um, so I feel like from that initial point of investing in the mentorship with you, because I was inspired, I took that step. Um, life helped me to take a massive leap, massively supported by you into both understanding how I could serve full stop, but particularly how I could serve young people. Um, and, you know, out the back of that came me deciding to write a book um, and uh, a whole host of other awesome things that uh, really set me up to be where I am now doing what I'm doing. Yeah, share with people the title of your book. Oh, it's mate, let's go one better. Come on, share this So, so there we uh, go. The book is called Creative Uprising. And you know what? When I first wrote it, um, some of it was my lived experience and some of it was ideas. I'm really good at synthesizing ideas and make, like you, making them accessible to people. So I put together all of the ideas that could help someone discover their gift, develop their gift, and then deliver it into the world. Um, mm. And looking back, I realized that some of the concepts I put in there that I've now lived myself, but also seen other major players start to share, yeah. I realized that I put together, for me, one of the best manuals out there of how someone who's creative can take that creativity and make a living and make a difference doing something they love. Um, so yeah, that's been a really humbling. Well, gee, let's talk. Let's talk about some of those people, and then we'll get into more about how and what you do with young people. And yep. you're talking about people with creativity. We'll talk about two people, right? We'll we'll get onto the Ed Sheeran bit in a second, right? Um, but when I want people to understand this, yes, you got G working with young people. But I remember when I G would travel with us and. I'd be speaking on multi-speaker events and at the end of every speaker's event we'd bring them to you and they'd come there and you would literally go into a three to four minute wrap up of what they had said and they were including like Richard Branson we're talking like some of the top people on the planet that were speaking and then they would be able to see and feel your rap and you totally transform the word rap in the sense of a wrap up in the world of personal development like a closed eye a summary a you know another way of learning the cool key points and then you did it in a rap and people are like yeah this is george george come and rap me come and do this come and do that so talk a little bit about that and then lead it into like you know the whole journey with Ed Sheeran as well, because you know, he is another soul that is about creativity and innovation. That's why you guys vibrate on the same energy. But yeah, talk about the, you know, the raps uh, that you were doing for people. So, you know, again, I have to salute you here is that I think you were the first person to be like, could you do that kind of live? Cause I, you know, I used to do it. We do the programs and I'd be kind of sitting in the back as we do it. And I'd be making up little bits about people. And then at the right at the end of the two or three day program, I deliver a poem that kind of bigged up everybody and kind of mm. helped them remember things. Um, but I remember, I, I, I try to think, you were doing an event with Marlon uh, back in the day, like a, I can't even remember what the kind of mm. uh, the title of it was. And you were like, do you think you could do that? What you do, do you think you could do it live? And we we're like, well, let's find out. And it turns out, and this is one of the things I always say is, again, it's like, we've got, a, there's a few things I'd love for your viewers to take from our conversation. One is, you know, when you take a step towards your inspiration, life will help you to take a leap. Yeah. And the other one is that when you do what you love, everything you've ever done will support you to do it brilliantly. Mm -hmm. And so back in the day, um, when we were doing all the hip hop stuff, I used to try and practice being like a battle rapper and like, and I was, I was terrible at it, but that's hard, it's really hard. You've got to insult someone's mum and make it rhyme and do it in time to the music. And so you've got literally microseconds to think of all this. Yeah. So. Turns out when you invited me to do it live, I'm, I'm there and I'm listening to what's happening on the stage and I've got minutes to, to put it all together rather than seconds. Mm. Like it turns out it's really, like, people are like, wow, how did you do that so quickly? I'm like, 
And actually, the secret is, it's really easy for me <laughs> because I've been training in this thing that's super impossibly hard. Yeah. Um, so for for all of your, your viewers, I, I, you know, I really share this message that there will be things that you take for granted, that you find are so easy, um, but which will light people up, which will wow them. And this was the case with these raps. I would, um, you know, I'm just thinking of folks like kind of uh, like Daniel Priestley being one and a few others who like, I really respect the work they've done in the world. And then when I would share it with them, they'd be like, that's amazing. Like, I feel like you know my stuff better than I do. Um, and that's, as I've kind of gone on the journey, I recognize one of the reasons why they're so powerful is not just because I was able to capture all the learning and the humor, but there's something profoundly like life affirming about being seen and heard. So when I'm able to kind of wrap up and say, here's what I heard, for that person to go, huh, like, yeah, that's really like there's something that kind of touches the soul when we are really deeply seen and heard. I and think. I, I know what that is because you use the phrase often, and that phrase is it's poetry in motion. Because when they can see their wisdom presented to them through the spoken word with the energy and the vibration of hip-hop and poetry it's like like what we used to say it's like Thierry Henry gliding through a football pitch right yeah and when you did the raps my daughter still says one of the greatest birthday gifts she ever got was George used I don't know if you still do it but we used to send George some information he'd ask us some information about our daughter we'd send it to him <clears throat> he did one for Harrison as well and then he would send it as the birthday wrap and you know for them it was that same gift whether you're one of the world's greatest speakers or thought leaders or whether you're an 11 year old girl who has a passion for cooking and singing and George comes and captures her wonderful gifts in poetry so that I want to make sure you get that back that when you're doing that it's poetry in motion mm. No, it's beautiful to hear that from Rosie because uh, mm. it's. Uh, I used to love doing that as well. That, again, this is another thing where um, you've got to just try things, and um, and you never know what will happen. And it just turned out people were loving these, like almost like you. I mean, you had the event wraps where I would wrap up what the speakers have been yeah, saying, yeah, yeah. and then the gift wraps, uh, which is like go. those personal gifts for people. Yeah. And um, that was a beautiful thing that you know I do still do those um, because to get an insight into people's personal world, but to then be able to celebrate them in my unique way. Um, like both, I think that's a great thing. When, when, a, when a real gift is given, both parties are nourished by the experience. Um, yeah. And that was very much the experience there. So we're, we're gonna talk about gift wrap because uh, in, a, in a little while, I'm gonna get you to give your gift for those that are watching and listening who are young people that are like what that empowerment that ability for you to let them step into their power and for those who are working with love and serving young people so give them some of your gift but let's let's hear about ed sheeran because some some people think oh you're on ed sheeran would you rapping with him i want you to tell them their way back where it all started go ahead so um this this started and this is a you know a story that is where actually i i failed and from that, sometimes in the failures, we get the greatest lessons, right? So a few years before um, I met you, H, um, I was, this was when the kind of the club nights were starting to peter out a bit, um, but we were kind of evolving into managing artists. Like we'd had so many incredible like MCs and rappers, performers come through our the nights that we put on. We were like, well, let's see if we could support some of these to, to go places. And one of those, shout out to Jimmy Davis, uh, artist known as Tapes. Um, and we put together a CD. And at the time, in our local area, there was a band that had just had a number one hit. Uh, the band was called Nisloppy. And they had a hit that probably many of you will know called the JCB song. Um, and because they were local, we were able to get Jimmy, the artist who we were working with, his CD into their hands to say, look, we'd love, if you're going on tour or whatever, we'd love to be the support act or whatever. And uh turns out that they really liked his music um it was this kind of conscious brummy rap uh and they loved it so we actually they were going on tour fairly soon and we were the kind of the the undercard whatever that kind of uh slot is called 
Um, and so we, we had this wonderful time going, I think we played like 10 or 12 different venues as far afield as like up to Leeds, all the way back down to Devon. It was like wonderful. Um, and for those who don't know, when you go on the, on the road on a, on a tour, um, two things happen. Very often the band will have some like helpers, they're called roadies, uh, but they'll have specific jobs. So there'll be some who might be the driver. And one of the, one of the supporters the band had was a, what's called known as the guitar tech. And the guitar tech's job is to kind of fix the guitars if they break literally or set up the microphones, make sure the band has got enough water and towels and all that. And so Ms. Loppy's guitar tech um, was this young lad. And also when you go on tour, you will get what's called a rider, which is where you basically get free food and drink from the venue. And none of us really drank. So this young lad, about 15 years old, would just drink all the free beer and then he would get what we called annoying <laughs> which is he would, he would start trying to be like hey george hey george do you want a rap battle and he'd be like hey jimmy hey jimmy do you want to hear my new song and then he would be pestering the main band with questions like why did you do this when you did this what were you trying to do and we were like all right give, like, give it a rest um and so one night on the tour he didn't have anywhere to stay um so we let him sleep on the sofa in, in my flat and the tour kind of ended and again because we weren't great entrepreneurs we didn't really go too far with our managing artist thing but we'd had this amazing experience of being on tour so about a year or so later i was working in um what's called a pupil referral unit uh, which is this wonderful thing in the uk where all of the children who have either educational challenges learning difficulties emotional challenges they all get lumped into this main one place outside of mainstream education and you'll get chairs thrown at you you'll get spat at you'll get sworn at it's the kind of place where harry's in his element right um <laughs> And like, like Harry, I kind of actually was, you know, I really enjoyed going there and we'd be getting these young kids to kind of rap. And most of the time they wanted to do no kind of work whatsoever, but we would be able to get through to them. And so one morning I came in and uh, one, of the, one of the lads I was working with was a guy, guy called Dean. And here was, here was how I walked in and saw Dean most mornings, like asleep on the desk. And sometimes he'd actually be like dribbling on the desk. This morning I walk in and he's like, George, 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 come here, come here. And he shows me, he's like, you've got to check this out, shows me this YouTube video. And there on the YouTube video is this young lad who had you know, slept on my sofa, had tried to rap battle me, he'd drunk all the free beer and got really annoying. And there was Ed Sheeran playing a song that would make him a household name called You Need Me, I Don't Need You. Mm. And here's where I fail. That young lad who I saw uh, trying to just pester people, rap battle us, by the way, I won the rap battles. Um, <laughs> sleep on my sofa. I, I didn't see Ed Sheeran. I just saw a 15-year-old kid who was a bit too enthusiastic. And seeing Ed there on that YouTube video that morning with Dean, and then seeing what he went on to do, um, I realized I had made a mistake. I'd underestimated a young person. And in underestimating Ed Sheeran, I learned that I would never do that again. Mm. And so for all of you out there, um, you do not know what the young person you may be supporting, or if you are a young person yourself watching this, like I promise you, when I met Ed, he was not, like, he, was, he was average. He could sing okay, he could rap okay, and he could play his guitar okay. Mm. He was not the world-class superstar who sells out stadiums and has the highest grossing tour the world's ever seen. And what got him there was that he found his passion and he put in the work. And so and on, on, that, on that note, George, I think yeah. this is a perfect segue into you sharing one of your tools or ways, methodologies of working people, because that's just such a, I always love it when you get to share that story so people understand it, because mm -hmm. in that moment of you going, oh man, I missed out on that it drove you to, to look for the greatness in every single young person that you work with. This is what makes you brilliant, because you're like, yeah. every single young person that you're helping with creativity is another Ed Sheeran in their own way. And this time you're like, it's no longer about you now, it's still like, hey, look, if we can help them to be who they want to be. So go ahead and share whatever it is. The, for those of you that are watching, the Empowering Youth Show is about bringing on amazing people, whether they're young people who are just empowering young people by them being present. And then it's also about amazing souls like George, who 
have a gift and a passion and they're still working it out, but they're managing to empower young people. When I say empower, get other young people to step into their power. And so we want to hear from them so they can guide you, whether you're a young person looking for that or whether you're someone at working and serving. So George, go ahead and give them your wisdom, something that they can use in their journey when it comes to working with young people. Beautiful. Um, so there, like, like we've covered two already, which is if you can operate on the two following principles to start with, like you're already ahead of the game, um, which is uh, help them to find what inspires them and help them to take a step towards whatever that inspiration is. Um, in the knowledge that when you do what you love, everything you've done will help you to do it, right? So that's mm -hmm. the kind of almost like, that's the foundation piece. Yeah. All right. Um, and then- Go deeper, go deeper now. Yeah. So here's the thing. We can, and we're gonna build on that idea of uh, me not clocking Ed Sheeran, right? Which is, if you come in with that mindset, that frame that any young person you're speaking to is capable of anything they want, right? Like that's, that's almost like you put on almost like an energy field that allows that young person to feel safe in your company. Okay. And then there's two things that you can build on to really make sure you connect. All right. Is to be real. No, like no BS. You do not need it. Like and me, me sharing my failures very often is the thing that allows young people to trust some of the other good stuff that they might be like, oh, this guy's talking SH1T. But actually, no, when they can see, look, I'm, yeah, here's where I didn't hit the mark, right? So when you can be real, that young person knows they can be real with you as well, yeah. all right? Yeah. And how do you do that? Very often, it's not necessarily going to be the words you say. We spoke already, like, you put your energy field on by saying, I know this young person is capable of anything, right? Yeah. And then it will be about your language, but it's not the words, it's your body language, very often. And so I'm standing up here, so it's not as easy for me to say, but very often, one of the reasons why I would connect with the young people in the pupil referral units was that I would see all the teachers uh, standing at the front, like taller than the rest of the class, right? And the kids are in the desk looking at my face. And I would go in and I'd just drop down and just lean on the desk. And just straight away, I'm coming down to their level. So say, look, there's no hierarchy here. Like, and I'm not saying those words, but just that very simple movement with my body lets them know that like, here is someone who is not trying to be bigger or, you know, so those two things, like keeping it real, sharing my failures, and then just being on their level, both of those things let them know that like, here is someone I can connect with, I can trust. And that's yeah. the basis of any support with young people is to create yeah. that trust. So let me paraphrase that for you all. So you always went, keep it real. Be you, don't pretend to be something else because they'll see through that. And then the other thing, because I've heard George put that in so many different ways. I remember once when he just put it, speak their language. And it's really important that you learn what that means when we say speak their language. It doesn't mean you've got to walk around going wago on or doing hip hop or anything. When he says speak, their language is already told you their body language, you know, the, the way they use their voice, all of these other things. So yeah, George, thank you so much for that. I mean, it, I always appreciate when the, the people that we bring on just go boom, straight back to something. And even if it's been repeated by others, hear that. So one more time, be real, speak their language. You heard that straight from George Hardwick. So George, what's what's next for George and how, how can people follow you? You know, you've got your uh, podcast, you've got your show. And even before we get that, it's watching your journey uh, and then watching you become a father and suddenly seeing George go from doing everything to George going, let's just stop for a second. They go to the, because fatherhood made you slow down and reflect even more. So give us a little bit of your flavor on fatherhood because I know those two beautiful souls, like they mean so much to you and me. So go ahead. I want you to share that on the show before mm. we find out how to stay in touch with you. Well, as you say that, what really comes through is that like every day is a journey for me in learning how to do those two things we just spoke about better and better, which is uh, being real and trying to speak their language. Um, and it's something that I don't, I don't always succeed. Um, you know, particularly the, with the advent of smartphones, my children's language is smartphone is nowhere near us, right? Mm -hmm. That's that, then they know they've got dad's full attention. 
Um, and you know that's very much what they love. Uh, so that's that's where I'm at is constantly trying to get those reps of keeping it real and speaking their language. Um, and it's uh, it is you're right. It's it's one of the most beautiful experiences to kind of really ground me into what truly matters. Because um, I have as someone who's just so energetic for life and wanting to be of service, like yeah. I can be uh, quite hectic. And uh, <laughs> it's, it's a beautiful. It's a beautiful grounding to have two small humans who uh, look to me for for guidance and love. So yeah, absolutely. That's when they they remind us of our mortality and our um, that we can make mistakes because when it comes to our own children, we're just mere mortals, right? We know that. Mm. So George, what's what's next for George, and how can people follow you, stay connected, or even just reach out to you? Um, so what's next? Um, I spoke about my experience of having the best education money could buy, which is, you know, a British boarding school education. Uh, so from age eight to 18, I was in a boarding school. And what I'm starting to see now, um, the, the kind of part of my journey we didn't really cover because, you know, we, it was, we were diving into the youth bit is since doing a lot of that, I, I started doing a lot of rites of passage and initiation work for young men in crisis um, through an organization called Abandoned Brothers and starting to really understand the impact of, of trauma. Mm -hmm. um and you know this is something that i know you know your your light model is so powerful in supporting people mm -hmm. to process that um and so what i see is now with this new frame of like okay i understand trauma on a deeper level mm -hmm. to look back and understand how traumatizing boarding school is in many situations um yeah. you know we give a lot of focus to people who've been in care and we understand that's going to be a traumatizing experience boarding school is just a posh version of being in care uh, in many situations, in terms of how it can impact people's emotional development. So what I'm what I'm focusing on at the moment, alongside my day-to-day uh, -day work at Falmouth University, where, where I get to basically work with uh, students who want to be starting their own businesses, and I get to support them to find their thing and be inspired and then communicate that through the business they want to build, which is amazing. Uh, I'm also working on um, a project called Unboarded Life, which is looking at how we can support kind of men particularly, but also women in the future who've been to boarding school, how can we support them to, yeah, like essentially do that, letting it out, right? like that, going through that light model in whatever kind of way works for them yeah. so that they can actually live their kind of truest self. And in doing that, very likely be even more potent servant leaders. Um, that's the really key piece here is that rightly, there's a conversation all around privilege that occurs and um, I believe that if we can give these people who've had that experience and who likely have got some resources because of their background, um, then and we it, potentially and, and unlock a massive... Yeah, and influence, because yes, we just exactly. have to, so take, we just have to take a look at where, yeah. where our so-called leaders um, have come yes. from and a huge and majority have been through that system. Thing. Mm. Yeah, that's the biggest piece is if we can help them to onboard their lives, the quality of leadership that they can step into um, yeah. is going to be diametrically opposed to what we see currently. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that's that's why that's a really big motivation for me, because I've been on that journey and I see how urgently needed it is. 100%. So how can people follow you, stay in touch with you? What, what is it you would like them to so, follow? Um, what link? Um, yeah, yeah. georgehardwick.net is my website um, and you can kind of get a sense of all the things I'm up to there and there's a contact me page there, which is probably the easiest way. Um, and then if you want to check out some of the things I've been doing, the Sovereign Human Show. If you type that into Google, uh, it will come up with the radio show, it'll come up with Spotify and iTunes and all that. So that is the show that uh, where I explore this concept of sovereignty, which is another way of saying how do you live a life of purpose and service. Um, yeah. So that's the Sovereign Human Show. Beautiful. So there you have it, guys. There we if go. If you want to connect with George, whether it's about how to work with young people, creativity, innovation, entrepreneurship, and even everything that you just talked about, onboarding, um, reach out to him. And when this show goes live on YouTube, there'll be some uh, places for you to comment and all the other channels that we're in. So, George, before I wrap it up, last words from you, but I just want to say thank you, brother, for being here and giving us your time and sharing your wisdom on the Empowering Youth Show. Absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. And please keep taking a step towards your inspiration. Keep doing what you love.
Awesome, brother. Let me just wrap it up how we usually do. So there you go, guys. That was George Hardwick and everything that I promised plus some from him. So please do make sure you reach out to him, send him some love, give him a comment, whatever you want to do. But let's wrap it up as we always do. And uh, if you haven't already subscribed to the YouTube channel, when you subscribe there, you will get access to all the episodes of Empowering Youth, as well as the Empowering Women show as well, bro. Right? But the big headline there is we are running our Youth Leadership Summit on the 28th, 29th of August 2021. So if you're watching this and the date's gone, you missed it. But if it's still in time for you, and you know anyone under the age of 19 that wants to get inspired and step into their power and have speakers like George Hardwick there, then get them to apply. Why? It's going to cost a zero. It's virtual and we have young people from around the world. And like I say, we have eight other amazing speakers just like George. So there's the link. Even if you can't follow the link, just find the foundation on any of those sites. Just send them the message that says youth and you'll get the details. So thank you very much. This is an episode. This is another episode of Empowering Youth. And I look forward to connecting with you on an episode, another episode very soon. Until then, keep serving.